There are two pilots here. The first pilot is checking around the outside of the aircraft to determine the direction to go. The second pilot is mainly checking the various instruments installed in the cockpit. These are two main ways of flight, called VFR and IFR. Today, let's learn about VFR and IFR. VFR is the way that pilots find their destination through their eyes. It is simple, and the pilots don't need any special equipment. The pilot's momentary decision, or intuition, is the most important factor. Here are some examples to help you understand VFR. Training aircraft. What do people do first to get a driver's license? They will probably practice driving close distances to get used to it. The pilots of the aircraft go through the same process. The first process is focused on takeoff and landing, which visually identifies the runway within the terminal control area. They don't need to use complex navigational equipment because they fly close routes. So in this case, what would be the best way to fly? Of course, VFR will be the best choice. Short Distance Flight Imagine you are driving to a local grocery store. Maybe you don't need to use Google Maps and you'll just go straight to the way you already know. Like this case, VFR is appropriate for pilots who are flying a short distance or in a well-known area. Urgent Mission Aircraft for transporting patients, military aircraft taking off urgently, and aerial firefighting aircraft don't have the time to obtain ATC clearance. In such cases, pilots fly under VFR in order to prepare for flight in a short time and plan an efficient flight route. Takeoff and landing without navigation facilities. What if the aircraft must take off or land on a helipad or landing pad without navigation facilities? There is no choice but to use VFR. An aerobatic aircraft and fighter jet. Machines replace people throughout the industry. However, there are tasks that only humans can handle which demand momentary judgment. They aren't simple and repetitive tasks. Military aircraft which conduct aerobatics and missile launch drills and rapid maneuvering fly in VFR for this reason. The weather condition in which a pilot can fly visually without the help of navigation aid is called Visual Meteorological Conditions and is abbreviated as VMC. What weather conditions can be considered VMC? When flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet or higher, the aircraft must be distanced 1,500 meters horizontally and 300 meters vertically from the cloud, and the minimum flight visibility is 8 kilometers. At altitudes below 10,000 feet, the minimum flight visibility is 5 kilometers. Pilots should not attempt to fly VFR in weather where these conditions are not met and if they encounter weather conditions which prevent maintaining VMC during the flight, they must change the way they fly. Moreover, an aircraft cannot take off, land, or enter by VFR at an airport control zone if the airport's official cloud base is 450 meters and the ground visibility is less than 5 kilometers. In other words, if the weather conditions are not met, controllers should not approve VFR flight, even if it was requested by the pilot. Let's learn about the minimum safety altitude that VFR aircraft must comply with. Aircraft must maintain an altitude of 1,000 feet or more from the highest obstacle within a 600-meter radius in densely populated areas and in other areas, maintain an altitude of 500 feet or more from the surface. Imagine that you're driving on a strange road and you've encountered a fog that's too thick to see the path ahead. How good would it be if someone told you how fast you'd maintain and when you'd stop and turn left and right? IFR is a flight mode with someone like this. IFR minimizes the visual judgment of pilots and relies on aircraft instruments such as the airspeed indicator, altitude indicator, and so on. 
The aircraft's position, altitude, and azimuth information received from the navigation equipment ensure that the aircraft is in the correct position. And with the help of air traffic controllers and radar systems, the aircraft can maintain a safe distance from other aircraft and obstacles. Therefore, pilots flying IFR should be able to handle various guidance systems and navigation equipment and understand the chart of instrument flight. IFR is much more complex than VFR. Why then do pilots fly IFR? This is because IFR can be more prepared for danger. IFR makes it possible to fly long distances in bad weather and even at night. For this reason, airliners should only fly IFR. So what should we be aware of for IFR flights? First, IFR aircraft should have good performance. IFR aircraft are divided into categories depending on their performance and equipped instrument. At each airport, the weather minimum for takeoff and landing is set differently depending on the aircraft category. Even if pilots fly on IFR in the same bad weather conditions, some aircraft can land and some other aircraft cannot, so they divert to the alternate airport or wait in the air until the weather improves. This means that IFR flight should be equipped with instruments and navigational systems suitable for the flight path and airports they plan to go. To fly IFR, check aircraft performance first. Second, IFR flights are only available to pilots who are eligible for instrument flight. The pilot has to complete special training required for the instrument flight and be qualified. However, even if the pilot is eligible for IFR flight, the qualification will be void if he doesn't operate an IFR flight for a certain period. The pilot's qualification for instrument flight is strictly managed for each country. If a pilot performs IFR flights without being qualified, he may be punished. If an aircraft suddenly requests an IFR while flying in a VFR, the controllers must check whether the pilot is eligible for instrument flight. Finally, if the minimum safety altitude is not set accordingly, the aircraft must maintain over 2,000 feet within a radius of 8 kilometers from the highest obstacles on mountainous or high ground. In other areas, the aircraft must maintain 1,000 feet or more. In addition to the regulations on altitude, there are things to be observed. The pilot must decide and submit the flight plan to the Air Traffic Control Agency before the flight happens. The pilot shall continue to listen to the controller's radio frequency and report their location if necessary. Air traffic controllers monitor all aircraft, regardless of the way of flight. Even in VFR flight, the pilot refers to their basic instruments. Even in IFR flights, the pilot visually checks the runway and flight path with their own eyes. Although the details are different, the basic principles to follow are the same, and the two types of flight are complementary. Neither VFR nor IFR is superior. Air traffic controllers do not consider giving priority according to the type of flight. Choosing IFR or VFR is a pilot's decision considering the weather and flight path. However, controllers should understand the differences and details between VFR and IFR and be prepared to help pilots in any way they fly. Why? Because that's the role of air traffic controllers. ATC for you.